This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. On this walk together, we're all on this journey together. We're, we'll call it a Hoosier hike. We got a Hoosier hike ahead of us for two weeks. And the good news is we have this in us. Now at 6 on Good Morning Indiana. Governor Eric Holcomb calling on Hoosiers to rally together as the fight to stop the coronavirus outbreak continues. With the COVID-19 outbreak, people are social distancing and trying to stay in their own homes. But some jobs require employees to break those barriers. This morning, we're talking to a local organization about how they're keeping their workers safe and finding out what to do to protect yourself if you have to have someone come to your home. And I've received nothing. I've tried to call them. I've tried to email them. They've never returned calls, no email, and I can't pay none of my bills. Some Hoosiers out of work because of the coronavirus crisis are still waiting to receive their unemployment checks. This morning, we talked to two people about their experiences and find out what the state is now doing to speed up the process. And it is 6 o'clock here on Tuesday, April 7th. Thanks for joining us on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey. And I'm Rafael Sanchez live in my living room as we continue to <laughs> practice some social distancing. And of course, uh, Todd Clausen, we're keeping a close eye on your forecast. The radar is really busy to the north. Yeah, you know, it's been a very, very active morning across northern Indiana, Rafael. Nothing severe, but a lot of heavy rainfall and a lot of thunder and lightning. And this has been just staying north of most of the area. The exception has been over in Jay County, which is uh, Portland here. You notice some heavy rainfall, some uh, lightning strikes, and then to put things in perspective right here, this line that you see. I know it's a little tough to see there. That's Interstate 69, and you notice as you work your way into the Hartford City area and just north towards Montpelier, that's where some heavy rain, a little bit of lightning is moving through. But all this rain is going to push off into Ohio. It's not going to make its way any further to the south. So if you're dry right now, you're dry from this point forward throughout most of the day. The exception is late tonight. Once again, storms re-enter the forecast. 50s and 60s this, uh, this morning. We are in great shape temperature wise will quickly warm throughout the day today with partly to mostly cloudy skies we're near 70 degrees already by the noon hour mid 70s later on this afternoon and then the storm threat arrives overnight tonight some of those storms could be severe we'll talk more about those coming up in just a few minutes but right now 602 time for another look at traffic with Lauren all right Todd thanks so much we are monitoring some road construction emergency repairs happening here this week on I-70 near Greenfield it's blocking one left westbound lane. This is near State Road 9. You can see the orange barrels there blocking the lanes of traffic on your screen. Traffic is still traveling up to speed both eastbound and westbound out here to our east. So that is good news this morning. We'll let you know if there are any delays. This morning, the Indiana State Department of Health now confirming 12 new COVID-19 deaths across our state. That means a total of 139 Hoosiers have died from the coronavirus. A statewide total of cases now stands at 4,944. Also a total of 26,191 people have been tested for the coronavirus in Indiana since the pandemic began. Taking a closer look into those numbers of people dying from COVID-19 in our state, we're learning about 39% of the deaths involve people 80 and older. Nearly 31% are 70 and older. About 19% of the deaths have come in the 60 to 69 age range. So far, no one under the age of 30 in Indiana has died from COVID-19. And looking at gender, about 60 percent of deaths are men and about 40 percent are women. Earlier this week, Governor Holcomb extended the stay-at-home order for another two weeks. It's obviously having a huge impact on non-essential businesses. Our Kelsey Anderson is joining us live this morning with more on how they're adapting to those changes. Kelsey. Hey, good morning, Lauren. So when Governor Holcomb extended the stay at home order, he also said that customers cannot go inside non essential businesses. We spoke with Sarah Gillespie at Gillespie Florist and she says she appreciate, appreciates the governor's new guidelines because it will keep her and her staff safe while allowing them to stay in business. She says they've been following the new guidelines for a while. Delivery service is something we do all year long. But the curbside service is something that we rolled out on the 25th um, and our storefront is closed, but we can bring flowers out to our customers there at the door. 
Businesses like grocery stores, pharmacies, and some businesses in the transportation industry can still operate as normal with customers allowed to still go in, shop, and then pay for their goods, though many stores are taking it upon themselves to limit how many people can go inside at a time. Again, businesses that are considered not essential can still remain open. Customers just cannot go inside so they can do delivery or curbside orders. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. The time now is 6.05 and our team coverage continues as businesses are looking for ways to protect their people from postal workers all the way through contractors. Our Alyssa Donovan spoke to one company taking extra precautions to keep you and their workers safe. Alyssa, good morning. There are certain things you can't put on hold during a stay at home order. Some of those might include necessary home repairs, like if a pipe burst or your foundation needs to be repaired. But some local businesses are taking necessary precautions so all of that work can get done while you stay safe. Are you experiencing any coronavirus symptoms? That is a screening question that we are asking at time of appointment. Jonas Murphy says it's a new part of the protocol for their team at Indiana Foundation Services. The structural repair company is considered an essential business. Checking if a client is feeling well before coming to their home to work is a necessity right now for both the homeowner and their crew members. And when they arrive, they gear up. Proper uh, protection equipment, so Tyvek suits, uh, respirator masks, gloves, eye protection. Most of the work they perform is outside or underneath the house, but they often have to go inside for inspections. They've adjusted to that process as well if the homeowner is high risk or uneasy about having others in their house. We're able to get the inspection done with no interaction. We can inspect the home. Um, we have actually taken advantage of technology and, and we've set up uh, whether a Skype call or a, a FaceTime and, and be able to uh, review what the findings were, talk through what the, the recommended repairs would be and, and be able to uh, continue, conduct business using technology. One of the top questions Indiana Foundation Services is receiving from their clients is, how am I going to pay for this? Often the work they do is time sensitive and can't wait until after the coronavirus is no longer a threat. That's why they are offering finance plans for anyone during this time. I'm Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Alyssa, thank you so much. Today the state will add an extra 100 people to handle unemployment calls. A third party company has been hired to help out. And here at RTV6, our hiring Hoosiers effort is really focused on the unemployment process. We want to make sure you get the benefits that you need. In Indiana, unemployment benefits for workers max out at $390 weekly over 26 weeks. An extra $600 in weekly payments will now be made available due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Hello, I'm Sandy Shepard, and I've been employed with my employer for 21 years. Sandy Shepard sent me this video. She applied for unemployment back on March the 20th. She normally would be making parts for Honda, Isuzu, or Toyota. And I've received nothing. I've tried to call them. I've tried to email them. They've never returned calls, no email. And I can't pay none of my bills, my mortgage, my car insurance. I can't buy my medicine. Also waiting, Michael of Indianapolis. On any other Tuesday, he'd be making parts for Ford. On March the 24th, he applied for benefits after being laid off. He asked not to be on camera. I haven't received any payment. I can't even pay my car payment or my car insurance or rent. And I can't even get my medicine. Michael and Sandy now both hope the money will arrive soon. So we'll stay on top of their stories. I should point out that the Department of Workforce Development has added extra people. On average, they tell me it will take 21 days to get 
your benefits. So keep that in mind. The state is looking at claims, right, like they've never seen before. So let's put this all in perspective. We spoke with the Department of Workforce Development. It has hired new people. It is also reassigning employees who don't typically work in the department, borrowing employees from other agencies, and working on forming partnerships with other companies to help with the call center. The department's chief of staff says they're hiring about 80 new employees with a new wave starting every week until they're at the staffing levels that they need. Everything is in such a different environment because it's unlikely that these individuals will come into our building to receive training. And of course, we had no virtual training prior to this. So everything, uh, you know, everything is happening sort of as we speak. We're trying to improve those processes and learn from it as we speak. So his best advice this morning to those of you who are filing for unemployment is to be to please be patient as they work through this process. RTV6 created Hiring Hoosiers with the goal of helping you every day. And we're committed to finding places still hiring despite the closures. For open jobs today and every day, please keep connected with us on HiringHoosiers.com. Kroger wants to better protect its customers and employees. Straight ahead on Good Morning Indiana, the changes you'll see soon at their grocery stores. Lauren? Raphael Lady Gaga is teaming up with World Health Organization and Global Citizen to raise money for healthcare professionals working on the front lines of the coronavirus pandemic. Coming up, details on the star's plan to raise millions of dollars and how you can play a part. Todd. It's a mild start to our day. Maybe you're thinking about breakfast. We'll give you the RTV6 drive through forecast here. If this morning you're talking about temperatures near 60 degrees with partly cloudy skies, nice and mild. By the lunch hour, we're pushing into the mid 60s. And then 70s later on this afternoon with partly cloudy skies. It's still mild, but there is the chance of storms overnight tonight. We'll talk about that and have your takeout Tuesday forecast coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues. The time now is 6-11. Welcome back. We're giving you a live look right now at traffic on the near east side. This is I-70 at Rural Street and Keystone Avenue. You can see traffic moving along up to speed in both directions here. Keep in mind, starting next week on Monday, we will have the eastbound lanes of I-70 closed on the east side for a long-term construction project, 30 days. Starting today, Kroger will start limiting the amount of customers in its stores. The company says it's one more way to help flatten the curve while still operating as an essential business. Under normal building codes, capacity is one person per 60 square feet. Under the new limits, the number will be one person per 120 square feet. Kroger says it will monitor customers by using infrared sensors and analytic technology. Kroger joins a growing list of stores that have already implemented similar rules, including Costco, Walmart, and Target. Rappers Meek Mill and Jay-Z are donating about 100,000 face masks to correctional facilities all across the country. This through their criminal justice reform alliance called the Reform Alliance. About 50,000 will be sent to Rikers Island Jail Complex. Another 25,000, 2,500 masks are being sent to the Rikers Medical Facility. Masks are also being sent to the Tennessee Department of Corrections and the Mississippi State Penitentiary. The initiative comes as prisons and jails are across the country face challenges due to the coronavirus pandemic. Reform Alliance and its leaders have worked around the clock for the past few weeks to get medical supplies to those behind bars. Meanwhile, Elon Musk's car company Tesla says it's revving up work to help address the shortage of ventilators for COVID patients. The company posted this video showing engineers designing ventilators using car parts. The engineers say those parts include what's called a mixing chamber from Tesla vehicles, as well as a touchscreen from Tesla's Model 3 sedan. It's not clear yet when the ventilators may be ready for production. Tesla has been working with ventilator maker Medtronic on this project. In other news this morning, Boeing will give it one more shot. They'll try to get a U.S. astronaut into space. Here's what's happening now. The company says it will repeat a test flight of its Starliner spacecraft after botching that first flight. The second try will likely happen this fall. The Starliner, it encountered a series of problems during its first uncrewed flight back in December. Its mission was cut short and officials scrapped plans for a docking with the International Space Station. Boeing says taxpayers will not be on the hook for the second test flight. 
And if you're looking for something to do today, head on outside and take a look up at the sky. The super pink moon will make an appearance. It's the biggest super moon of 2020. But don't plan on seeing the moon actually look super pink. According to the Farmer's Almanac, the moon will be its usual golden color before fading to a bright white. The name super pink moon was given because it often corresponds with the early springtime blooms of the moss pink wildflower. Sky gazers will be able to see super moon today and tomorrow. It will reach its peak elimination around 10 35 p.m. Eastern Time. The next and final super moon of the year is on May 7th. Of course, that always is weather dependent, Todd. So <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Are we going to be able to see anything you, up there? You know, that's why I told you yesterday. Yesterday, the skies were clear. I was like, take a look at the moon. I know it's not quite full and it's not the exact super moon, but there was a better chance yesterday than there is uh, tonight uh, for seeing that as the clouds will be kind of moving in. This morning, we're dealing with some heavy rain across parts of the area. Oh, look at this moving through the Hartford City area over towards Montpelier, heading over towards the Penville area. Some lightning here as well, but none of this is severe. This is sliding off to the east, going across Indiana 26 here, heading across Indiana 1, and then eventually off into Ohio. Back behind that, there's a few isolated downpours near Monticello in the Logansport area as well, but we've lost the lightning there. That is the good news, and all these showers again will be moving off into Ohio. They will not move south. If you are dry right now, you are going to be dry throughout the remainder of at least uh, the daytime hours today. A live look downtown shows no visibility issues. Yesterday we had a little bit of patchy fog, not the case this morning. 60 degrees with a slight wind out of the southwest at 9 miles per hour and everybody's within a couple degrees of each other and everybody's on the mild side in the upper 50s to low 60s and we'll see these temperatures today even with some cloud cover that'll be around at times throughout the day today. Climb quickly into the 70s by the early afternoon hours should get up to 75 degrees for your high temperature later on uh, this afternoon. It'll be a little breezy at times, but hey, can't complain with the temperatures that are going to be up in the 70s. I want to fast forward uh, to tonight as we work our way into the evening hours. There's going to be a weak front that comes through, and by 8 o'clock, it's pushing through Chicago. By the time we get to 11 o'clock, it's moving into some northern counties, and then it drops down to the south, impacting the metro area by about 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, and then it exits the area by 4 o'clock this evening. You saw some pretty intense uh, thunderstorms there, and there is the potential for severe weather. The entire state under the slight risk for severe weather from the Storm Prediction Center. What are the main threats? Well, here are your three main ones. Uh, the highest is actually going to be hail with these storms as they come through. The secondary threat is going to be wind, and the lowest threat, but not completely out of the question, would be an isolated tornado or two. And But of course, this is coming through during the overnight hours. So that's why you need to be prepared as you go to bed this evening and many people will be sleeping. So you need something to alert you if there is the potential for some warnings, which there will be. Uh, and that would be either a weather radio or download the Storm Shield app onto your phone. Uh, it acts as a weather radio for you completely free in the app store. Tomorrow's another warm day. Temperatures will be up in the 70s. And then again, tomorrow evening, another round of storms come through. Those will not likely be severe, but it is with a cold front and look what the cold front does to the temperatures Thursday and Friday only right around 50 degrees well below normal then we do see the temperatures moderate a little bit as we head into Easter weekend Lauren Todd thanks here's a live look right now at traffic on I-65 this is a live look near State Road 44 down there in Johnson County the exit 90 to Franklin you can see traffic is moving along smoothly there pretty quiet this morning no issues to slow you down so let's head back down to Franklin Raphael Hey, Lauren, good morning. The road to the NFL draft will happen virtually this year. Commissioner Roger Goodell says it will happen in people's homes, their living rooms, their offices, but it will not happen with a lot of people in the same room. The league had said it was considering two options for the three-day draft in April. One involved trying to find a safe and legal way for teams to use their traditional war rooms. The other had coaches and their staffs selecting players from their personal homes. Well, you can guess which one won. That's, of course, social distancing has won. The draft starts on April the 23rd. We need to tell the stories of and celebrate the frontline community, healthcare workers, and their acts of kindness. 
Lady Gaga is teaming up with the World Health Organization, Global Citizen, and three major broadcast networks to organize a virtual concert to raise money for protective equipment for healthcare professionals. The singer said that she spent the past week raising $35 million in donations for this cause. The virtual concert, One World Together at Home, will be broadcast by ABC, NBC, and CBS. Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, and Stephen Colbert will host the event. Lady Gaga will curate the music acts, which will feature Stevie Wonder, Billie Eilish, Paul McCartney, Elton John, Lizzo, and more. The stories of heroic healthcare workers and others will also be highlighted. You can watch One World Together at Home right here on RTV6 on April 18th at 8 p.m. The special will also be available on streaming services. A big thank you to all our hometown heroes. That is a good cause. Lowe's workers and customers, they raised safety concerns when the store continued to hold their spring Black Friday sale last weekend. Do you remember this? Coming up, how the home improvement store is reacting to the nationwide backlash. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on RTV6. Forks online auction and virtual event. All right, welcome back. The time right now is 6.25, and it's time to talk about what is trending at 6. So, Raphael, I don't know about you, but since this whole thing started, I have not even thought about working out, unless you count chasing a one-year-old around, but hasn't been too active over at our household. That's not you, the case for say, this guy. Yeah. Did you say working out? Working out? What is that, not, right? <laughs> yeah, not in the living room, no. No. I, mean, I do have my pajamas on, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, so this guy, he's doing the opposite of what we're doing. That whole quarantine thing isn't stopping this Virginia man from competing. This is Michael Wardian. He recently entered his bid to win the quarantine backyard ultra marathon. Wardian ran the same loop around his Arlington neighborhood for more than 60 hours. Every hour on the hour, he ran 4.2 miles. The race started with more than 2,000 runners from around the world, and it came down to Wardian and a runner from the Czech Republic. Unfortunately, Wardian just missed out on the record early this morning due to a technical glitch. We got an I-24, I-24. I oh, Richard oh. Blutch is waving a hammer up high. Oh. Can I just say, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> After Matthew McConaughey is cheering up some seniors isolated in his home state of Texas, and his family is getting in on the fun as well. Virtual bingo, bingo. That's the Oscar winner's latest plan to help Texans getting through the pandemic. He played it with residents of the Enclave at Round Rock Senior Living Facility. His wife, their children, and his mother also joined in the game. Anytime that Matthew McConaughey, I imagine Lauren would call you, you'd take the call, right? I would definitely yeah. take the call, Raphael. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here's another good story for you. A group of kittens in Georgia found the perfect place to hang out as they wait for their forever homes. There they are. Nemo, Guppy, Marlin, Bubbles, and Dory, those are the kittens. They got to explore the Georgia Aquarium when it's closed due to human visitors being not able to go there for the coronavirus outbreak. Staff at the Atlanta Humane Society said that the kittens got jealous after puppies got to explore. Needless to say, the kittens were smitten with their new fishy friends. I feel like this is heaven. They said, did I die and go to heaven? <laughs> Just <laughs> aquariums <laughs> full of fish. Stare, look at their eyes and their heads. <laughs> Forecast. It's a pretty good one. Sunrise 719. Temperatures warming from the 50s to near 70 already by the noon hour with high today in the 70s for just about everybody. In fact, some locations in the south could get close to 80 degrees, Lauren. Todd, thanks. Lowe's and Home Depot are getting backlash after continuing to hold their spring Black Friday sales amid the coronavirus restrictions. RTV6 first told you about safety concerns from customers and workers last Friday. So working for you, our John Matarese is showing us how home improvement stores and some other state governments are now responding. During this time of crisis when non-essential stores are closed and grocery stores are limiting the number of people who can come in, why were Lowe's and Home Depot packed over the weekend? Photos on social media show packed parking lots and crowds inside Lowe's and Home Depot as RTV6's Kara Kinney first reported last Friday. The two stores are allowed to stay open because they sell essential home repair and cleaning supplies. But pictures show crowds lining up to buy mulch, flowers, and grills. One big box store employee said these customers are like the spring breakers on Miami Beach last month. 
Lowe's has responded saying it's placing floor markers and warning signs throughout its stores. And Lowe's and Home Depot's websites are no longer advertising springtime sales. One state, Vermont, has now taken things further and is ordering big box stores to close off their garden centers, toy department, and electronics department, and sell those items only for curbside pickup. As always, don't waste your money. I'm John Matteris for Good Morning Indiana. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Now in Good Morning Indiana on this Tuesday morning, here's a look at your 630 news feed. A man is dead after police say he took his own life following a SWAT standoff in Claremont. Officers were called to a home on Elizabeth Street around midnight. Police tell us that a man inside fired gunshots at officers before shooting himself. No officers were injured. Starting today, Kroger limiting the amount of customers in its stores. The company says it's one more way to help flatten that curve while still operating as an essential business. Under normal building codes, capacity is one person per 60 square feet. Under the new limits, the number will be one person per 120 square feet. Kroger says they will monitor customers by using infrared sensors and analytic technology. Indiana State Parks want you to know that they remain open and free to enter during the COVID-19 shutdown. However, the governor has closed the campgrounds at state parks. If you have reservations, you'll be refunded with no reservation fees. Park officials say they'll also transfer reservations to a later date. We'll have more on the latest COVID-19 pandemic response from the state coming up with our Kelsey Anderson in less than two minutes. But first, here it is, 6.30 on our Tuesday morning. Thanks for waking up early with us here on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey. And I'm Rafael Sanchez. Welcome to the RTV6 official living room. It's also a good day, though. I'm inside at this moment, Todd Clausen. It will be a great day to download the RTV6 Shield app. Yeah, the Storm Shield app, a great tool to have. You won't need it during the daytime hours today, but it's even more important, I think, when you're sleeping to alert you to the potential for severe weather, which we will have kind of wrapping up around this time tomorrow. There's actually some rain outside right now. It's in northern locations, quickly racing off into Ohio. That's non severe, uh, but some of you in northern locations had some heavy downpours and some rumbles of thunder. Most of us were dry. Here are your highs for the day today 74 in Kokomo near. 80 in southern locations and the daytime hours will be drier. Rain chances don't really ramp up until late tonight as we get to 11 o'clock onward and that's when a cold front will come through and that's when we will have the potential until probably around 4 or 5 o'clock tomorrow morning of the threat of severe weather. So Raphael mentioned the Storm Shield app. It's an app for your phone. It's completely free. A great tool to have. You set it to your location so you don't get all the alerts across all of central Indiana. It's just for your uh, location that you set. It also has a radar you can control. So again, it will wake you up if you're sleeping at night and say a tornado warning gets issued. We'll talk more about the threats of severe weather for you coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, thanks so much. We are keeping a close on traffic, close eye on traffic as you're heading out the door. This is a look at I-70 in Greenfield. We do have those orange barrels out on the roads. Left lane heading westbound block near State Road 9. This is due to some repairs that crews are doing in the area this week. So keep that in mind. Traffic is still getting by just find no delays to report heading eastbound or westbound. It's 632. The COVID-19 numbers continue to creep upward in Indiana. Here are the numbers as of Monday. 139 people in Indiana have died from the coronavirus so far. The state health department also says we are now approaching 5,000 total cases of the virus. So far, more than 26,000 people in the state have been tested for COVID-19. We emphasize that's only the number of tests that have been reported to the state health department. Those those numbers will be updated at 10 o'clock this morning. So there's no foot traffic inside of the facility um, going forward for all retail businesses. Governor Holcomb extending the stay at home order for another two weeks. And there are also some new restrictions for businesses in Indiana. Some businesses considered non-essential will have to work under some new guidelines. People can't just go into the store. Our Kelsey Anderson joins us this morning with how businesses are now adapting. Kelsey, good morning. Hey, Raphael, good morning. You'll have to excuse the sound. I was just thinking the grass here at the State House needed to be cut, and now they're here answering that call. So you're going to have to mind the noise of the lawnmower behind us. But this week, I've seen a lot of creativity when it comes to businesses 
Just in my neighborhood alone, a lot of the small shops are doing curbside pickup, and even a restaurant had a live concert for people to enjoy while eating dinner in their cars this weekend. Yesterday, we spoke to Sarah Jalipsy. She owns Jalipsy Florist. She says, as a florist, they have always done delivery, but starting about a week ago, they uh, started offering curbside pickup. The new orders announced on Monday impact businesses like florist, bookstores, craft stores, and beauty supply stores. These things are not necessities of life, but we've created a category that allows them to continue operating under new conditions and restrictions. Specifically, the inside of the store has to be closed to customers. I don't think that there's going to be a long-term effect on the business, but I do think that when the stay-at-home order is lifted, it's going to take a couple of weeks to normalize to our new normal, whatever that will be. Jalipsy says it's new and different, but she appreciates the governor's orders because it will keep her and her staff safe while also allowing them to stay open for business. Now, again, businesses that are considered non-essential can stay open so long as no customers come inside their store. They can do delivery or curbside or online orders, whatever works best for that business, as long as no one comes inside. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. Kelsey, thank you so much. It is 635. We know this week is Holy Week for many Christians. But it comes as a time when many are legally barred from gathering inside of their places of worship. A few church leaders have criticized Governor Holcomb for not doing some, as some other states have, labeling church services as essential activity. The governor says he is not backing down. This disease does not care. This disease will prey on their vulnerable. This disease will prey on large gatherings. We have it within us to prevent that. Last weekend, a Church of Christ in Hammond, Indiana, received a citation for holding a Palm Sunday service in violation of the state's stay-at-home order. Raphael. Uh, so we're seeing more people wearing uh, face coverings or working behind plastic shields. Our Lisa Donovan spoke to one company that is taking some extra precautions to keep you and their workers safe. Alyssa, good morning. There are some home repair jobs that just can't be put off. So how can you be sure workers aren't tracking germs and coronavirus into your house? I spoke to a few local businesses that are doing everything they can to ensure you are safe. Jonas Murphy says checking if a client is feeling well before coming to their home to work, it's a new part of the protocol for their team at Indiana Foundation Services. The structural repair company is considered an essential business. Crews gear up when they arrive, wearing Tyvek suits, respiratory masks, and eye protection. Most of the work they perform is outside or underneath the house, but they often have to go inside for inspections. They've adjusted to that process as well. If the homeowner is high risk or uneasy about having others in their house. We're able to get the inspection done with no interaction. We can inspect the home. Um, we have actually taken advantage of technology and, and we've set up uh, whether a Skype call or a, a FaceTime and, and be able to uh, review what the findings were, talk through what the, the recommended repairs would be and, and be able to uh, continue, conduct business using technology. There are some things that you can do to stay safe too. Make sure you stay six feet away from workers while they're in your house, preferably in another room, and when they leave, disinfect all surfaces that they touched. I'm Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Alyssa, thank you. The president is pushing for a drug that could treat COVID-19. Some doctors believe it may not be safe for everyone to take. Up next, a new report on what could be a reason for that push. And the price tag looks a little bit high, but this time it might not be price gouging. We're going to show you how some, in some instances, the higher cost could be something that is justified. It is 637. Stick around. We'll be right back. Time now is 640. President Trump's push of an unproven COVID-19 treatment appears to be a big point of contention between the president and some health experts on the coronavirus task force. Now the president is facing questions after New York Times report showed that Trump had financial stake in a pharmaceutical company that produces the drug. The French company Sanofi makes the commercial form of a malaria drug hydroxychloroquine. If it becomes an accepted treatment for COVID-19, Sanofi and other drug companies could financially benefit. Doctors, however, caution that the misuse of the drug could cause death in some people. You could lose your life. It's unproven. 
And so certainly there are some limited studies, as Dr. Fauci said, uh, but at this point, we just don't have the data uh, to suggest uh, that we should be using this medication for COVID-19. The Times reports that several associates of the president are investors in the maker of the drug, including a Trump donor, investment banker Ken Fisher, and mutual fund that was previously run by Trump's Commerce Secretary, Wilbur Ross. And I think, Raphael, we're all just hoping that we can find something to treat this disease. We'll keep an eye on that. Lauren, thank you so much. Complaints keep pouring in to the Indiana State Attorney General's office about excessive pricing during this pandemic by stores really across the state. More than 160 people have filed complaints so far against gas stations, stores, and online retailers. Allison Mendenhall bought hand sanitizer at a gas station on Franklin Road in Indianapolis. She was shocked to see how much it cost. $7.00. $7 for a two ounce bottle. Typically a bottle like that goes for less than two bucks. Allison filed a complaint with the attorney general's office alleging price gouging. Such a shortage for, for food, for toilet paper, of course, for any, any kind of necessity that's really needed right now. And I mean, people are out there making their own masks because of the shortage. People are making their own hand sanitizer. My mother-in-law had to make her own because my father-in-law has an autoimmune disease. So, you know, we're all out there trying to make it the best we can. And the least thing we want to worry about is, you know, um, places like that hiking the price up. So here's the other side of the story. A gas station manager told us that their wholesaler is charging them more, thus the pricing. We checked with SE Imports and Wholesale, who told us, quote, our supplier charges much more about a month ago than they usually did. Even these prices that we are purchasing for right now are much higher than a traditional two ounce bottle used to cost us. RTV6's Hiring Hoosiers is committed to sharing the latest information for those who've lost work as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. The State Department of Workforce Development says extra money and unemployment benefits will start being paid out on April 20th. They added $600 a week as part of the federal stimulus bill passed last month. People like Rhonda Wilson works at a tavern in Lafayette. She wants to know why it will take so long. So working for you, RTV6 reached out to an attorney who specializes in employment law. If the president has already signed this and released this package, I just don't understand why people have to wait when the help is there. That $600 is still in play in Washington, D.C. as to when and how it will be released. We have too much work to do, too many applications to process in this period of time. This was an avalanche. People will receive retroactive payments back to the date of their unemployment eligibility. The payment period is March 29th through July 31st. The wait for benefits from the federal stimulus bill could be even longer for some Hoosiers who may be self-employed or work as independent contractors. They are also eligible for the $600 payments, but the state announced today it's still working on a system for those workers to apply. It is 644. Once the engines are started at the Art of Bricks, they'll be revving for quite some time next. How racing fans here in Indy will have a lot to go see once this pandemic has passed. Todd. All right, Lauren, it's Takeout Tuesday. We're open as a partnership with RTV6 and local restaurants to get you to support them in this tough time. And the restaurant I'm featuring today, my takeout forecast, fired by the Monon in a broad ripple just off the Monon Trail there, north of 65th Street. Todd's top takes from there. The Nero salad had salmon to it. The tenderloin, I kid you not, you get it to go. It comes in a small pizza box. It's so big. And don't forget Patricia's bread pudding. It is top. IndyChannel.com forward slash we're open. Highlights all the restaurants, not just this one, that are open for business in this tough time. We'll have more on your forecast coming up in just a few minutes. TV.com. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana. The COVID-19 pandemic has forced IndyCar to cancel the Detroit Grand Prix. But good news for fans here in Indianapolis. The Indianapolis Motor Speedway is adding a third race. The things you find when you work from home. Our day first has much more. 
And Speedway President Doug Bowles joins us from his home. Here's the good news, Doug. If you like IndyCar racing, uh, fans have three shots now added at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Yeah, they do. So we just added uh, another race at the end of the season, first weekend in October on Saturday, October 3rd. We're going to call it a Harvest GP, kind of a throwback to a race that took place in 1916 at the Speedway as part of our GT Challenge weekend. You know, with Detroit canceling, uh, IndyCar was looking for a place to run an additional race. And Roger said, hey, how about running at the Speedway? I said, absolutely, let's go do it. And that's uh, so we announced that today. We're looking forward to it. I mean, the bottom line is this strange times call for strange measures. And we're certainly smack dab in the middle of this and the Speedway way if they can help the IndyCar series in whatever way they will. Absolutely. And, you know, for us, we wanted to be helpful as Roger and Mark Miles and Jay Fry are really navigating the entire the entire schedule for the NTT IndyCar season. Uh, we're an easy one to say, hey, we're open that day. We're running on the road course that day. Indianapolis loves hosting the IndyCar guys. Let's bring them on back. And the bottom line, the, the construction will continue at some point. I mean, even though there's nothing going on in the Speedway president, I would imagine there's a ton going on right now. You know, it's really strange. We're a lot busier now than uh, than you would think. It's it's uh, in fact this entire weekend we worked through the weekend to get the NTT IndyCar Series schedule done, make sure we fit in it okay, and uh, we've got stuff going on at the speed where we're going to be ready for fans whenever we can open up. Hopefully, by a big machine vodka 400 weekend in July. Thanks, Doug. Be safe. Thank you. All right, thank you, Dave and Doug. Look, something to look forward to there at the end of the year as we enter fall today. A great spring day, though. It's the warmest day we have uh, this week with the daytime hours being completely dry here. But then the, we do have uh, this severe threat of weather as we work our way into the overnight hours late tonight into early Wednesday morning. For some of you, it's been a pretty active morning here to the north. We're kind of winding things down, but still some heavier downpours just north of Gas City as well as Marion over towards Hartford City. A little bit of rain. But the bulk of the heaviest rain and the strongest storms have now pushed off into Ohio. You look back off to the west, there's not a whole lot going on. And most of the area is partly cloudy at this 6 o'clock hour. How about these temperatures? 50s and 60s across most of the area. 60 in Indy, 59 in Bloomington. 62 is the current temperature in Terre Haute. Highs today, well above the normal high of 61. 77 in Lafayette today, about 73 in Tipton. 74 as you work your way into the Richmond area. Wouldn't be shocked that we keep enough sunshine around into the afternoon hours that highs in southern locations could approach 80 degrees, maybe even top 80 degrees, and then in around the metro area, looking at highs today at 75. We'll go back and forth between partly and mostly cloudy skies today. It'll be a little breezy at times, but hey, beggars can't be choosers here when we're talking about temperatures uh, that are in uh, the mid-70s for afternoon highs. Let's talk about those uh, storm chances as we work our way into the late evening hours. You'll notice storms flare up across northern Indiana. Look at the time, 8 o'clock. That line of storms starts to sink to the south by 11 o'clock, impacting the Peru area. Moves into the metro area, I would say, between about 2 and 3 o'clock uh, in, uh, in general across the area, and then it will start to push down to the south. It's out of the area by the time we get to 5 o'clock uh, uh, in the morning uh, tomorrow. So it's an overnight event. What's makes it more difficult because many of you are sleeping. And so if warnings do get issued, you probably don't wake up until maybe a rumble of thunder wakes you up or, or there's maybe an isolated tornado, which is a possibility. So that's why it's imperative you have the Storm Shield app downloaded. The main threat though tonight will be large hail and high winds. The tornado threat is on the lower side of the spectrum, but not completely out of the question. You don't have to worry about flooding. These storms will move through very quickly, so that won't be a concern for us. Uh, but make sure you join us here at the news at noon and Kevin throughout the evening hours and we'll update you on that severe threat. Tomorrow we get some sunshine back into the 70s, but another cold front comes through tomorrow evening uh, with some heavier rainfall and that will lead to much colder air by Thursday and Friday with temperatures in the 40s and 50s. Some spotty showers on Easter it looks like, Lauren, with highs right around 60 degrees. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a look right now at traffic in the downtown area. Lots of headlights out this way. I-65 and I-70 at the North Split. Traffic is picking up here heading into the metro area. Everything's traveling up to speed though. No crashes to report around the metro area at this time, but of course we'll keep our eyes on your roads and keep you updated. When the sports season is on hold, you sometimes have to improvise a little bit at home. So coming up, we'll show you how the pandemic lockdown may have helped us find the next big soccer star. That's after the break. Weekdays from 5
430 to 7. Welcome back. The COVID-19 pandemic is, of course, a tough time for sports fans. Nothing to watch for a while. So some people are passing time by making up their own sports at home while they're stuck there. So... Uh, GG, cioè, complimenti. Fantastico. Un gol fa me lo fare, eh? Ho fatto una brutta figura. Attenzione. Eh, hey, GG, cioè, non passo la palla... Our Italian isn't very good, but that was fantastico, as you heard. We gathered from all of that that the goalie's name is Gigi. Good job, Gigi. Okay. Yeah, she's pretty good. All right, you know who else is pretty good at doing the weather, though? Todd Clausen <laughs> sticking around here to tell us about what we can expect for our Tuesday. You know, it's going to be a pretty nice Tuesday for us. It's going to be warm. That is the good news. High temperatures in the mid-70s. Some of you could even be getting up to 80 degrees later on this afternoon. We'll go back and forth between partly to mostly cloudy skies. The daytime hours today will be completely dry. However, overnight tonight, there will be the potential for some strong to severe storms. Wind and hail, the two main threats, still mild tomorrow. But then another cold front comes through Wednesday with another round of showers. Those are probably non-severe. That ushers in much colder weather as we get into Thursday and Friday with high temperatures that will only be right around 50 degrees. All right, Todd, thanks so much. And thank you for joining us. We're back right here in 25 minutes and all throughout Good Morning America with your local news, weather, and, of course, traffic updates. Remember that we are always on on the RTV6 app. Enjoy today's sunrise. Stay at home. Don't forget to stay at home. Enjoy Good Morning America next right here on RTV6. What a beautiful sight. Indianapolis. Good morning. We'll see you tomorrow morning.